Hello, it's Deborah from Attic Lane and I'm here with the second part of our journaling discovery video of uh, looking at what supplies we can use to make a junk journal. So following on from the first video, I'll provide a link to it below if you haven't already seen that. I'm taking two of the big books, upside down books, that we used in the first video when we were looking at what's uh, source material for making a junk journal and I've taken some pages from each of those. I found where the string was keeping them attached in the spine of the book and I've cut them free. This uh, musical book dates from 1924 so it's nearly a hundred years old and it's uh, there was a lot of fluff when I took the pages apart there's quite a lot of fluff in there that needed to be um, just swept away. So I've, I've got those pages ready and cleaned up a little bit. I've done the same with the dictionary book, sorry no, the book of quotations, and I haven't done my fluff buster test, so let's just see if this is, if this needs a bit of extra help. It's not too bad, not too bad, that's okay. So as you can see we get some lovely, when you open them out you get some lovely big pages, so lots of potential there for being used in a journal. Just going to check the rest of these pages. It's worth doing when a book is as old as these are just to make sure there's nothing in there that you you don't necessarily want in your junk journal. It, I mean junk journal just means using up old stuff, upcycling, recycling, it doesn't mean junk. Well maybe it does. I'm going to open out all of these pages and then I'm going to show you what we've got here apart from my cup of tea. I've separated all of my pages and I've opened them out. I'm not going to cut them down the middle, there's a couple of reasons for that. I've also got 10 pages of normal office copier paper. This is 80 grams per square metre, so just an ordinary white printing paper. Here, let me do it this way so you can see the whole tray. This is my cup of tea and this is how we're going to stain the papers. This is um, a baking tray which I keep just for doing this particular job. It's got a lip on it, you can see that's maybe mm, three quarters of an inch, three centimetres. And this is just for staining papers and here is a very strong, well it would be a very strong cup of tea but it's a jug of tea. Most people that I've seen online use uh, coffee to do their staining. I'm British, I think coffee's for drinking and I use tea bags to do mine. So let's start with these papers. This tray is just big enough to hold these papers uh, opened out full. And the reason that, I, I don't think I'm going to use these papers this size in a journal, but the reason I'm not splitting them down the middle is because it's a very sunny day here today and I'm going to take them outside when I've stained them and I'm going to hang them up over a washing line to dry. So I'm going to use the fold in the paper to hang it over. I wouldn't use this fold in my journal either because although I've been very careful about the way that I've gutted it, it's got holes in there, you can see there are holes, and this would not be a strong place for us then to sew our journal together. So I'm keeping the seam because it will help me dry the papers today, but normally once I pulled them out I would split them down the middle. All that happens now is I do this. It's really really difficult. <laughs> if it was difficult I wouldn't be doing it. That is a lovely strong cup of tea. So you'll be surprised how how much it takes to encourage paper to soak up liquid. I was surprised. The other thing I was surprised at is how dirty it makes your fingers. So um, I have special little gloves for exactly this because uh, it's taken me about a week to get my 
pans clean from something I was doing last week. All I was doing was shelling uh, broad beans and I got absolutely filthy. My hands looked so grubby. I couldn't make a video again until I'd got my hands clean. So rather than put myself in that position and not be able to film anything for a few days, I'm being organised. I have gloves. Now I'm going to pack this down and make sure that all of the water has soaked into all of the paper and I'll show you what I meant about having to encourage it. This is just the top layer. Look, <laughs> it's, so it's all on this first layer and there's none there at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my pages in their little bath of tea and I'm going to encourage the water or the tea to soak into the pages. And then when they're all soaked in, I'm going to carefully lift them up and I'm going to take them outside and I'm going to create sun-dried paper. Once I've done that, I'll bring this back indoors and I'll show you how it's turned out. I have something else that I'm going to stain today. This is from the first video where we looked at supplies that you could use to make your junk journal and this is one of the sides from a cereal packet. I want to change this, I want to alter this. I want to create something a little bit different on the inside of this. This is nice and plain and we could use this to stencil on or ink onto or stamp onto but I want to um, I want to change that a little bit and I'm going to use my tea bath to do that. So I'm going to stain this I think it will look a nice colour and I've left these, I was going to cut it down to size but I've decided to leave these uh, little bits on the edge here because I'm going to put this outside on my line as well as the paper so this way I can hang it from my line using those little bits there and then I can cut it down later on when I'm ready. So here we are a couple of hours later after the papers have uh, been stained and left to dry outside in the sunshine. I had to take off the rubber gloves in the end, they were just too bulky for me to separate the pages out so uh, my hands do look a little bit like I've got a suntan, been somewhere exotic like I know Southampton or somewhere. So the pile of papers that we have now is beautifully beautifully stained. Some of them more so than others, some of them took to the stain a little bit better than others. I've kept them fairly lightly stained though, they're not heavily uh, stained because you don't always necessarily want everything to be brown, you might want to add some brighter colours to this so I'd rather that we started out light and then added darker colours as we went on. One other thing to say is that when you find that you've got some uh, of the tea mixture left in the big tray that I was soaking the pages in. Don't throw it away, decant it into a spray bottle because then you've got a mister in that shade and you can darken that down, you can add another tea bag in there, you can darken it down but it means that you've got uh, some opportunities to make splotches and I'll show you that on one of these sheets. There we go, I hope you can see that's just a little bit of extra staining and I'll leave that to dry and it will look proper old. I did discover something else when I was making these. Um, normally I tea stain them as I showed you in the tray and then I put them into another tray that's identical to the first one and I dry them out in the oven. So the oven is on a sort of a low medium temperature. I use 170 degrees plus fan so I'm actually setting it to 150 and then the fan builds it up to 170 and they go in the oven for about three minutes a single page and then when I pull it out it's it's pretty much like this maybe it's a little bit more crinkled it's probably more like this when I pull it out of the oven and what I've learned is that uh, when you hang them outside it's a good idea 
to make sure that they're not near the whitewashing that you've put out earlier on because if there's a breeze the breeze can pick up as these dangle down the ink balloons or collects in the bottom of the sheet and the wind can come along and just weak that those those little droplets of tea onto your whitewashing particularly onto white t-shirts but it's all right it's it's absolutely fine that I have tea stained one of the t-shirts I'm not worried about it it's not my t-shirt these are my sheets then all ready to be used and the last thing I need to show you is this this is the cereal packet that I said I was going to stain and it hasn't taken much on this side which is as you expect because the outside of these boxes have a very thin veneer of a, a sort of a, a plasticky effect um, substrate so that it protects the cardboard on the inside but on the inside you get a lovely brown stain I'm going to cut this down to size and then I'm going to show you how we can distress this piece of cardboard into something that looks like old vintage leather this has been cut down to size I'm now working on my craft mat because it's going to get a bit a uh, bit wet and messy I've also cut off and reserved one of the top panels from the box this is where it folds in at the top I've kept this because we can use that to make tags or make a belly band or make a side uh, tuck pocket but we'll reserve that we'll keep that and I've got as well as my cup of tea which I'll put to one side um, I've got vegetable glycerin and this is a spray bottle with water and some of the vegetable glycerin in it. Now, vegetable glycerin um, is found, it used to be that you can buy this in chemists. Uh, I think now you need to buy this online, but it's readily available. It's not very expensive for uh, 100 mils and a spray bottle of water. Um, the amount of vegetable glycerin that I've mix, mixed in with the water is about, about to there. So it's not roughly to, to there. It's about a centimetre on this bottle. So it's not a great deal at all. Just a little bit, just enough to, to come up to about there and then fill the rest up with water and give it a little sugar. The reason I've done that, and I've, uh, I've shown this in a previous video and lots of people have got videos out there showing you how to do this, um, is because if you tried to scrunch up this cardboard it would get very hard, very harsh folds in it and you couldn't really scrunch it, you could only sort of fold it and score it. But if we add glycerin, a spray of glycerin water, it makes it more malleable. The glycerin helps the board the cardboard absorb the water so that it becomes easier to manipulate. So we're going to do this with the back of the cardboard from the cereal box. It's been tea stained already because this is going to be the outside of our book and this is going to be the inside. When you're trying to encourage it to absorb the glycerin water mixture don't rub it because what will happen is that you'll loosen the the tiny paper fibers on the top of this and it'll go mottly so when you want it to absorb the water just pat it the other thing that's nice about doing this is it's very good for your skin the glycerin is a lovely softener for your skin and just pat the cardboard down like this keep encouraging it to absorb all of that water and as you do so it will become more pliable. I'm doing this in real time, I'm not going to speed this up because I want you to see roughly how much water you need to apply and how long it takes. There's no exact measurements um, and I always find it quite frustrating when I'm watching videos and people say just keep going until you get to this stage and I think, well, if I keep going, do I need to keep going for half an hour or 10 minutes? And that's why we're going to take our time about this and we'll show you how to do it really, really properly. It's getting more pliable. I think this is maybe the fifth 
of misting that we've we've done on this. Again I'm going to pat it down, just encourage the cardboard to absorb the water. It's nice on my hands, it's nice and softening on my hands. You will feel it change. You can see it's it's much more floppy. It's very pliable now but I've creased it a little bit there and you can see it still looks like a, a crease mark so I'm going to add another spray hopefully this might be the last spray we need when you press it down like this you can feel it disappearing under your hands you can feel the glycerin water mix just soaking away. Still, what I want to do is I want to be able to fold the card without breaking the surface. And that bit there is very close. Let's try another spray. This also hopefully gives you an idea of how much of this mixture you need. It's a very inexact science. I'm also going to add a little to the reverse. This may continue to break even when it does have quite a lot of glycerin water mix added because of the different coating on the reverse or on the outside facing part of the cereal box because that doesn't absorb as easily or as readily on this side because it's a different finish on that side it absorbs much more easily on this side can you hear my dog gone to have a little shout at the neighbours. They're used to him. He shouts at them quite a lot. <laughs> he also, he also uh, shouts at horses going past. He shouts at cars that might have stopped in the lane. He likes everybody to know it's his lane. He's proper shouty today, isn't he? <laughs> He'll settle down in a minute. So it's absorbing beautifully on this side. Less so on this side. But that's okay. That's okay because I think now... Can you see how... Let me just roll this. We couldn't possibly have rolled this before we applied the glycerin in the water without it cracking. And now it hasn't cracked at all, it's fine. I'm going to just try and roll it a little bit tighter. That's pretty tight. Lovely. Let's see if we can roll it this way. This is where I expect cracks. But it doesn't matter so much because they won't be visible because this pattern side will be the inside and it will be covered over. So I'm not too worried. I mean that's actually not bad. It hasn't it's cracked a little bit around the edges, but that's that's all. You can actually see. I used to um I used to buy packaging for a food manufacturing company, so this is not unfamiliar territory, but you can see uh little little threads there where I've rolled it and the sort of plasticky layer has gone a little bit more mottled and it isn't present on this side. So let's see if we can scrunch this. 
yeah I think we can scrunch this okay so what I'm going to do I'm not going to go too crazy I'm just going to take my time just crunch it a little bit so I'm scrunching it up and I'm squeezing it not too tightly and then I'm going to release it and squeeze it again and you want to try and add folds in different areas that's not bad that's also a beautiful colour I really like that colour at this point having squeezed it I got a rip there but we're not too worried about that having squeezed it and crunched it up a little bit I'm going to add more glycerin and that's all absorbed beautifully so I'll add another layer I'll pat that in and we'll scrunch it again I'm going to try and not let that uh, tear there become any bigger but if it does it's not a problem there's loads of ways that we can deal with that this time I can scrunch it a little tighter I can scrunch it into a ball I can just squeeze it a little bit in place and then unfurl it again oh I've got a couple of rips now so I ripped it a little bit uh, here and a little bit here but it hasn't broken through so again not too worried about that lots that we can do about that I think that's looking quite nice that's looking a bit leathery and aged and I don't want to do too much more to this because it's not I don't want to run the risk of putting in too many tears I can cope with all of the ones that we've got here that's absolutely fine and it's a good idea for you to see those and see how we how we can deal with those so I'm not going to add any more of the glycerin water mix I'm going to reserve that and put that to one side and maybe you can see how much we've used about uh, so it was it was here when we started we started here and it's now here very roughly so that's roughly how much we've used and there'll be another in there to do another two maybe three journal covers the other thing that we can do at this stage is take our spray bottle that has the remains of the tea stain in it and just add a little splash when that dries it might just give it give us a little bit of extra colour You won't be able to see that yet because it's soaking in, but maybe when it dries it'll be easier to see. Now I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to let it dry. I'm not going to hang it outside because it's only one sheet. I don't want to scare the neighbours because they, they already think I'm a domestic idiot. So um, we won't give them any more uh, fuel for that, <laughs> for that opinion. And I will put this to one side and we'll let it dry. This is the page that we've just sprayed with the remains of our tea stain solution and it's given it some really nice vintagey age spots all across it so that's now dried and that's ready to be used I'm going to cut some pages this is why I have my um, 12 by 12 cut and this is a very very old one I don't think it's available anymore um, it's a making memories uh, cutter and I've had it for oh, it must be about eight years I think um, and it's a self-sharpening one so it's a very good cutter there are very good guillotines out there you might like to use a guillotine I'm a bit scared of them because I know I'm klutzy so I, I like to have a contained um, cut so that the cutting all happens within this housing here and I feel a little bit safer knowing it's done like that that measures four and a quarter by six and a half and that's a nice size that's a nice size for a little journal and we know that our outer piece will be big enough to contain these pages so I'm going to go ahead and cut some more I'm going to cut some of the dictionary pages 
and I'm going to cut some of the plain pages. Now what it will mean is that in some of these sheets there's some really nice detail here where the water is. So it may be four and a quarter, eight and a half. Ah. So if I cut that down, so this measures all together. Hold on, do it by eye. If I had if I had my pages the width of this, which is eight and a quarter, then I could use these these wonderful effects at the bottom of my page and not lose them. So I'm actually going to trim another tiny little bit. I'm going to take another I'm going to take it down to four inches. And it's a good idea to practice on a piece of paper and just see what size and shape you like. Because this is waste paper. If I don't like this shape, that's fine. I can just bin it and I can try with another one. That's nice. So that means that I could use these sheets and still have my nice edges. So I'm going to cut these down and I'm going to cut down about 10 or 12 pages because what we're going to make is a single signature journal and that means that we'll we'll cut 10 or 12 full sheets we'll fold them in half and then we'll stitch them into place all our pages have been cut to size and when you see them side on that's a lovely crunchy book of papers while we're still waiting for the front cover to dry I want to show you another way that you can use your tea stain that you have reserved in a spray bottle. Um, I'm trying to do this assuming you've got very few supplies, so it's it's real junk journaling from very very basic um, basic equipment. But I I will show you this because if you had anything like this, it would be a good idea to know about it. This is seam binding. It's 100% rayon. This is difficult to come by in the UK. Um, I ordered it from Amazon, but it was a, an American company who delivered it. They did do it very quickly, though. They did deliver within about uh, seven to ten days, which is pretty fast. But if you see anything like this in a UK shop um, and you think, oh, is that the stuff? Is that the right stuff? Is that seam binding? Um, it's 100% rayon and it's about... I think it's about a quarter inch, maybe that's a half inch. And in preparation for maybe doing some ties and things for our journal, I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to tea stain that as well. Uh, I'm also going to use my glove. I'm going to try and keep my hands sort of clean and I'm going to give this a really good old spritz. So it started out very white and we're going to spray it and, and make it a vintagey tea stained colour. This is why I, I want to use the little rubber glove because I'm going to scrunch this up. I'm going to try and make it take on all of that tea. Don't forget this is just tea bags and water. And we've already made a big difference to that. I'm trying to find you something white that you can make a comparison with it. This is white and this isn't. So that's taken on a beautiful creamy buttery hue. Very very lovely colour. That I'm now going to I'm going to leave it crunched up because that will crinkle and it will mean that when it's dry and I open it out it will have a crinkly texture. And I can show you that with another piece that I've dyed using some Distress Oxide inks. If I get out of that glove. This is, um, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful colour. I've actually dyed this for a specific project and I've used a Distress Oxide called Iced Spruce. And it's lovely. Really beautiful colour. And again, I'll show you with the white thing. Just lovely. So that's how, that's got some crinkle in it. And that's how this piece will turn out once it's dry. 
Our cereal packet has now dried. It's completely dried and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to very gently press this edge to make sure that I don't crack the cardboard or the paper. We've got a little bit there, got a little bit there. I'm not too worried about that. We can hide that, we can disguise that. So these will fit well within our outer case. That means also that I can cut down this case. So that's fine. I'm going to do that with my 12 by 12 trimmer, but I'm going to leave a little bit. I'm going to leave maybe a quarter inch at the bottom and a quarter inch at the top and a quarter at the side. That's it cut down. I've reserved these pieces because I may use these to add some texture to a tag. So I'm going to hang on to those just as I've hung on to all of the little offcuts from when I was cutting my pages down to size because these can also be useful when we're adding pockets and details into the journal itself. So I'm going to put my page to one side for the moment. I'm going to go back to this. One of the reasons I wasn't too worried about where uh, some of the cardboard has uh, sort of delaminated and layered up. These aren't holes in it by the way. It hasn't punctured. But I'm not worried about this because we're going to use this stuff. This is a plastic coat clear sealer. It's transparent and I'm using the one that has the gloss finish. There's also a satin finish and I believe there's a matte finish as well. And what you do is you simply spray this onto the outside cover and it will seal it and it will give it a little bit extra protection. So if you maybe splashed a little bit of water or something on it, um, it wouldn't get through to the cardboard. It would be slightly protected from that. And I should just say that with the, the sort of cardboard that we're using here and, and the old papers, this isn't something that will last forever in a day and become an heirloom piece. I don't, I don't imagine it will. This is um, a, a quick, fun, easy journal just using things that you might have around your house. So I can show you later on in other videos how you can make something that will be a little bit more substantial and might stand the test of time a bit better. But I'm not planning on this being the sort of journal that I would, I would have forever in a day. But you never know, you never know. Now, this stuff, is pretty toxic, pretty evil. It actually says um, use in a, a well ventilated area. Now, as a responsible adult, I usually ignore that advice, but on this occasion, I'm going to do exactly that because this stuff is not very nice. So the way that I, I do this and spray this so it doesn't go everywhere and, and uh, put clear sealer all over my house and my desk is I have a box. This is a big box and what I do, I'm going to do this off camera because I'm going to do it uh, by an open window and I'm going to put this in here like that and then I'm going to go and I'm going to spray it with this stuff and I'm going to let it dry and I'm probably going to give it a couple of coats to make sure that it gets maximum protection. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come back and speak to you when that's done. Our varnish sealed and coated cover is now dry and you should be able to see the shimmer there from that gloss finish. Even without us doing anything else to this cover, that's given a really nice effect. It's a little bit different. It doesn't look just like cardboard. It looks as if there's a bit more texture in there as well and I think it certainly looks different from a cereal box. I don't think you would think that was a uh, the side panel from a cereal box. So we have our papers, we have our cover and the next stage is to add detail to the pages, add tuck spots, add envelopes and use our papers to create interest on the inside of our journal. And that's what the next video is going to cover. So I hope that you will join me for that. Thank you very much for your time as always. And I hope we see each other again soon. Take care.